Welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. Featuring Sys Admin Expert, Don Pizzette. Security Specialist, Daniel Lowry. And Peter. Hello and welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. I'm your host, Peter Van Rysdam, and I am joined this week by the namesake of the show, Don Pizzette. Don, how are you doing? I bothered to show up. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> That's the level of excellence <laughs> I strive okay. for. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> a g- good uh, Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, you know, we uh, actually, I, I changed out faucets in the house, so I was uh, a little DIY. Living the dream. Yep. I like how Don celebrates the and, and memorializes the fallen soldiers of this country yeah. by... Putting in new faucets yeah. in the house. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, it couldn't go to the parade. Yeah, that's true. Do they have a parade? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that could be one. And Daniel, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Also putting in the bare minimum effort, mm-hmm. showing up. Keep Fantastic. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So, I mean, should we just stand here for the rest of the episode? I like then? it. <laughs> like, you know, there's news out there. Like if was, someone would just have cared to look, we might have been able to talk about it. Yeah, I was told we had to fill like 45 well. minutes. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But anyway, aspirational so, goals. Yeah, yeah gotta have go. them. Hey, so uh, we're going to do something a little different this week. We don't have a guest this week. Uh, our guest had to actually reschedule, so we'll um, we'll have that guest on again in the future. So we'll leave that as a surprise. Um, but we wanted to play a little uh, a little game, a little have a little bit of fun in the meantime. Uh, so we're gonna we we went to Twitter, and we said, "What's going on in the world of tech? And what are people pissed about? What are they happy about? And let's see if if we agree, basically." So we're calling this section uh, "socially awkward." I uh, didn't make an intro for that. It'll just be a picture of you. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just us kind of standing there for a second. That's the intro. Going, uh, uh, but you can kind of play the Napoleon Dynamite theme or something in your head. So uh, the first topic we wanted to look at, this is a, a tweet from Diana Ricketts who says, Amazon U.S. customers have one week to opt out of mass wireless sharing. Critics uh, raise transparency fears over plans to turn all smart home devices into a mesh network. And uh, along those same lines, a, a woman named Bunny asks, do any of my security-minded peeps have thoughts on Amazon's sidewalk mesh? So I know personally, you know, I've got a few Alexa devices in my house. I've got the Amazon, uh, I can't remember what, the, uh, Eero, I think is the name of the mesh, the actual, um, you know, wireless mesh system in my home. So does that mean come June 8th, I'm broadcasting out to the whole neighborhood? Anyone walking by with their dog can connect to my network? Well, you know, I, I'll have to look up to see exactly what equipment's covered under it because I, I know it originally focused on the ring equipment, like the ring doorbell, oh, the ring crap. plug lights, the and things. So, the, the, the oh yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, not yeah. that, not so the movie. If you detect Technically. the network, you'll be dead within what is it, twenty four hours? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, well, but what I, a way I, to go, though. Right? <laughs> I, I believe, and this is where I start getting into this gray area, but it's just the equipment that is on the exterior of the home because the, the idea is that it's supposed to create a mm. Wi Fi mesh network outside. So if there's a jogger going by, running down the sidewalk, or, or whatever that their mobile device might be able to temporarily connect to receive messages and tell Amazon hmm. where you are. That's an interesting proposition. Like, where it is the... Are we giving, like, Im- implicit uh, consent for those people to be able to connect to our internal networks and utilize bandwidth that we pay for? It's in that terms of service you scrolled or past. how does that work? <laughs> so you, you are implicitly giving permission, yes. By turning on an Amazon device. Yes. So you have hmm. to opt out. If you hmm. don't want it, you have to opt out, and you have until June... What did you say, Peter? June I think 8th? it's the 8th. Yeah, so you have to go on the Alexa app. thing, too, is that... No, you don't. You don't opt into. Oh, you know that sounds like a cool thing that I would want to be a part of. It's by default. So if you know nothing about this and you've got Alexas and whatnot or whatever these devices are at home, mm-hmm. you're just well, pissed out of Daniel, luck because this sure, is happening. If you were unaware this occurs, I'm sure you opted in when you hit accept to the terms of service. <laughs> yeah, but those <laughs> terms of service, back. as you know, they change. Yeah. Uh, in this case, you know your your Amazon devices already basically have a VPN tunnel back to Amazon, so they they create an gotcha. encrypted tunnel back, and that's what they relay the video data and other things on. So when somebody connects with Amazon Sidewalk, the idea is they do not have access to your internal network devices, right? But they are able to use your internet connection to be able to reach all the way back to Amazon. Now there have been devices like did any of you guys have a like the Kindle e reader? It, it used to yeah. have what was called WhisperSync. Mm-hmm. So so it, it was a it was a cell phone connection that was inside the device. So you could buy a book and it would download it. You didn't have to have a contract. 
or you know sign up with AT&T or anybody. It just did it. Mm-hmm. Amazon covered that. So I think they're trying to provide that same idea. It's like, what if a whole neighborhood, everybody had a ring doorbell, and that meant you now have this mesh network that spreads across the whole neighborhood. So somebody walking down the sidewalk could be sending and receiving emails that whole time or receiving text messages, that kind of thing. So th- there is a, a public use kind of positive side of this, but it's very similar to the cable companies where they'll take the cable modems and put a Wi-Fi uh, yeah. access point inside of the cable modem. And I don't know about you, but I always disable that. So The Wi-Fi inside the cable modem? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually using mine right now. So Oh, you are? Yeah. So I, was instead everyone of having, else in instead your of having two devices, <laughs> it was I was like, oh, I'm going to go the easy route this time. and Because I was having some trouble with the current setup that I had. And yeah. I think that my cable modem was actually like on the fritz. So like, oh, you can get this new and improved versus so like, ah, eh, whatever, give it to me. But All right, so this I, was years ago. I, I'm a little more paranoid because I don't trust, like, because the, the cable company or DSL or whatever it is you're using, they yeah. they are able to control the modem. Even if you buy the modem yourself, yeah. they're able to control I ran, it. I ran into that because I couldn't change DNS settings because, you know, they love that DNS information. Yep. So then I hacked it. <laughs> <laughs> and now it does whatever the hell I tell it to. If Which it, the way if it like knows it. what's good for it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so for me, I always disable those features in the modem, and yeah. then I use my own router on the other side. Yeah. But, I have been thinking about going back because I want more control. I want like a PFSense firewall and yeah. just have more control over that. And now apparently I got to go take the hammer to all my Alexa devices. <laughs> well, what if I go to the web page? Is that like, let's say that I'm in a browser and I go to Amazon. Does does that implicitly allow them? Or is that where they're going to go with this? Or are we already there to where, mm-hmm. well, you're engaging with Amazon. So we're just going to start collecting information through your browser about your devices or anything other else connected, looking for that Amazon information. You know, if we grab other stuff, they we'll, already know everything about problem? you. Yeah. yeah, they do already know a lot. <laughs> they um, do. There are some pretty big limitations on this. Like it, it runs at 900 megahertz, okay. right? Uh, which is where I, I don't think the Echoes have a 900 megahertz antenna in them. Mm. So that's where it goes to the exterior. You know, the, the, the ring devices use right. Zigbee or Z Wave or one of those right. technologies. So 900 megahertz gets them really good range, but not a lot of bandwidth. And so this is really bandwidth constrained. And I, I've been Googling feverishly here. I can't find it. Um, they, they had released how much it, it was limited to something like 50 kilobytes or something like a, a real low number. It's supposed to be just mm. basic communication. So it's pretty well throttled, but you have to trust that's the case. Right. They, they could change that. At any time. So, Here's the thing. I don't trust Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> you don't trust anybody. No. Uh, so the, the, I want to get to the next one. But first, I just have one more question, Don. We've been looking at it from the um, person who owns the Ring devices perspective. But as the guy you know, walking down the street, is it something I have to connect to a Wi-Fi network then? Or is it just once I've connected to this Amazon Mesh network once, kind of anywhere I go, past one i'll i'll jump on that it, it depends on your device so you know if you've got a a kindle it will probably automatically connect i imagine mm. amazon is going to push that setting out but if you've got an iphone you know the iphone mm. has an option in there where you have to enable it to be able to join uh, uh non-password protected or non-secure wireless networks so you'd probably have to turn that on so i think it's going to depend on the device but i wonder if i've joined it once if it's the same network then if i'm by someone else's oh, yeah. house it's it, the same thing yeah it, it should be an all or nothing type okay. thing yeah, yeah cool. I, did we did we kind of go down a similar road before with like uh, Apple and Android devices where they were geolo- geolocating you and using yeah. that stuff and they were like they weren't telling anybody they were doing well it was in the terms of service or whatever yeah. that they could do that but nobody knew it was actually happening then when somebody finally cracked the lid on it now they are mandated to have you opt into that type of thing yeah, and and inform you that that's what you're doing. You think we're going to go down the same road with this? Oh, I think so. Do either of you guys have ring doorbells? I do. No, I have a sky bell. Uh, I Peter, do. you do? Yeah. Uh, did you opt into Amazon Neighborhood? I believe I did. All right. So, do 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 you understand what Amazon Neighborhood does? Isn't that the thing where sh- I share with other people when when they get broken into and they tell me about stuff? You share with the police. Yes. Oh crap. So <laughs> at, at any the time, the man is in my house. Yeah. When you when you join Amazon Neighborhood. Uh, at any time, the police, without a warrant, you're basically giving them permission to pull up your ring doorbell camera footage. Hmm. So, you know, if a neighbor has a break in and they think that maybe your camera was able to capture that. So, like, my, my camera clearly picks up the front door of my, my neighbor across the street's house. Right. So if they had a break in, the police could, without a warrant, because they've already got permission, pull up my ring doorbell and look. Now, honestly, I'm okay with that. Yeah, but uh, what if I'm standing on my own front porch exposing myself? Well, so that would be in there. All the sudden. I've got a question. <laughs> yeah. What if the people that run the police decide that uh, they're going to abuse their power and they have access to these systems? They would, that I know that happen. never happens. That, okay. yeah. that kind of thing has never occurred in history at all. So Thanks, just a theoretically, 
So I, I would be worried about that if they were cameras in my house. Yeah. But when the camera's pointing outside of my house, uh-huh. I, I don't really have a problem. Yeah, what with about that? the okay. ring cameras I have in my house? Well, you know, that's a different, <laughs> now, now I do house. have ring cameras I have in, two my in my house. house. Yeah. yeah. But Amazon neighborhood is is I believe limited the to door. the doorbell. Or yeah. probably those uh uh, floodlight cams a, as well. Okay, so there are different types of cameras. Yeah, you, if you've named it bathroom, it knows not to do it. Yeah, oh, but I've put okay. a bunch of doorbells in my in my different rooms of That's my house. That's what Don's got that website for. <laughs> That's right. He's got to make that money. I Amazon put a doorbell camera in in the bathroom to see if if the bathroom is full, so I yeah, don't have to yeah. get up if someone's already in there. That's a good idea. Jeez. Oh man. Well, I gotta I gotta take a look at that. Yeah, well, you got some terms of service well, to look over. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but let's move on to the next one. Uh, our next one is about wearables. This is. Uh, Joa Bocas says patients can be monitored for early detection of deterioration in a range of different settings, including hospitals, homes, and care homes. More than ever, wearables are crucial in the delivery of the digital uh, health of the future, and the future is now. And there's another one about wearables here, uh, kind of taking the flip side that says, uh, this is from Chris Mickens, who's, uh, she says, when my Apple Watch beeps to remind me to stand up every hour, I get up, walk to the kitchen, and start rummaging for snacks. Wearables really are the future, I think, as I stand here huffing cheese puffs to get credit <laughs> for the hour. So I, I was curious uh, about this one because I, I saw some things about how Apple's ahead in wearables. And, and Don, you're the only one of us with a, an Apple Watch, right? Uh, I'm actually analog. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're. Oh, I thought you had an Apple no. Watch. Uh, I did for a long time. Okay. Yeah. I did too, and I and I stopped. I stopped wearing it. I sold it. Uh, like for, when they first yeah, came for out. Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drugs. Yeah. I don't even remember. It's just caught on his ring camera. <laughs> but, it, but it was crazy. But do, do you guys? Right where there. you guys at? Where do you stand on wearables? So, uh, well, first off, I would challenge the article uh, that the future is not now. The present <laughs> is now. That's right. True. The future, by That's definition, is is in the future. Yeah. That's um, science. You know. So. I've had wearables, uh, several different ones. I had the Pebble Watch way back when those came oh, out, and uh, I had an Android watch at one point. I've, I've had uh, several Apple Watches. And about a year and a half ago, I recognized that all the wearables are really putting a big focus on fitness, right? Tracking your heart rate and how many steps you went and stuff. And uh, and if you know me, then you know that I don't really care about that. <laughs> <laughs> when so, you say you had several, uh, do you mean at one time, like swatch watches kind of oh, just yes. going down your arm? That's yeah, cool. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he looked like one of those guys in New York back in the day. You want to buy a watch? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I, I decided at one point, you know, my, my wife had given me this watch uh, when we got married. So it was a, huh. a wedding gift uh, years and years ago. Uh, and well, I'd I must stopped. say it's a real piece of crap. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, reflective of, of the marriage. His wife <laughs> or the, oh, the, the watch? Okay. <laughs> So, wow. therapy bin. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it it was something I had sentimental attachment to, and I was like, you know, I'm wearing these digital watches, and what do I really get out of them? Uh, I, I, the fitness stuff doesn't matter to me. They tell the time, but they're kind of annoying in how, like, when you go to look, half the time yeah. they're blank face. They don't detect the wrist Ooh, motion. You get to pay a monthly fee for its cell service. Uh, if you do the cell service, yeah. I never did that. Oh, okay. Because uh, that's designed for people who jog without their cell phone. Yeah. Right. But if yeah, you yeah. have your cell phone, you don't need the cell service. No. Uh, and again, Don doesn't jock. Yeah. We yeah. There's, there's that. So my wife has one. She has a um, a watch for her Android device, but she's always carrying. You know, we have a baby, so mm-hmm. she's always like hands are full. So it's nice for her to be able to like look at her wrist and see the text or whatever. So she she likes it for that. I felt very rude when I had my Apple Watch because you would get notifications, and before you'd say, "Well, I'll wait till this conversation's over to pull out my phone and look at it." With the watch, you're always just kind of looking down and, and constantly. It's like, but and that implication is what you got somewhere to be, you know? But no, no, I just right. got a, my thing went off again and again. Yeah, but, the social construct of if you're looking at your watch, it's yeah, it's rude. You've got something. There. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I think they'll be great down the future, and I, I mean if. If I could get a contact lens that could, you know, put some augmented reality in there or, or things like that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for that. I know there's the whole mark of the beast. I'm, you know, <laughs> not supposed to get a, a chip installed in me or something. But, hey, if I, you know, if it lets me pay for my, you know, slushy quicker, yeah. I'm, I'm all you in. Know, Peter's yeah. like, hail Satan. Yeah. <laughs> hail Satan, give me that slushy. <laughs> Man, did you know what's in this? I got this augmented <laughs> reality. It's straight not sugar. Good for me. Oh, that would be terrible. Like, if, if, if it would yeah. just show you the ingredients of anything yeah. you're about to eat. Can you uh, show me the, like, the chemical <laughs> no, structure of this 
I can't even pronounce that word. You just yeah. look around and it highlights trans fats. <laughs> yeah. It just shows no. It shows you an image of what you'll look like in a mirror yeah. after you eat these. Augment my real. Oh no! Yeah. This is how I see myself. <laughs> Wonder on the flip side, it could make me look good in right, the mirror. Like, yeah, like yeah. what would happen if you turn that around? And you're like, you look in the mirror and you just see an Adonis. What's that shallow <laughs> howl? Yeah. That, that movie where like everybody's just running around morbidly obese and unhealthy. And I get to say my avatar, what what I am <laughs> right. shown as to you. Right. <laughs> Well, that Peter is a good-looking dude. And if you right, like if I could make Don see what yeah, I exactly. see, right? Yeah, it's your avatar. Yeah, That's like it. you send him what you want. We're, to see. We're in um, what's that? Uh, the 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 book there. Ready uh, Player Ready One. Ready Player One. Yeah. There you go. Oh, exactly. Yeah, we're there. The Oasis. The future is now. Yeah. <laughs> or later. Or now. Well, the future now. from before no, when we were talking about it is now. That future's gone now. So now oh, this crap. is the other. The it's new like future. Epcot. Yesterday's <laughs> vision of tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Last last tweet we want to look at real quick, uh, and we're gonna bring this one up because. Don joked about, uh, you know, when, when we had the <laughs> Apple announcement a while back, the latest stuff came out. I said the big news from it was the, what are they called? The Air Tags, the <laughs> Apple Air Tags. Yeah. And Don said those are stupid. Um, <laughs> and why would anyone ever use them? Better and so than the Apple Skin a, Tags. Though, be, be, right? Much no. better. <laughs> and easier to deal with. Yeah. So uh, this tweet is from Kaman Holobaw, who says, why did I pick all these names that I can't understand? Uh, dog lovers, keep your dog safe and find them on uh, the Apple Find iPad with Apple Air Tags uh, that can be used on all animals, and so all these people are making <laughs> little yeah all animals. So I want to see the little snake rolling around with one, but people are making uh, holders for them that that attach to to a dog tag uh, to a, a collar. Which honestly, that makes total sense. So and basically, your GPS and your animal. Well, yeah. let me let me poo poo this because it's totally stupid. Please. Okay. Uh, now you guys are pet owners. Well, I have a Daniel? cat. Okay, a cat. Yeah. I got a dog. Um, who, it, who gets out? Who, who she digs under the fence sometimes? Yeah, I've had dogs that do the same thing. Yeah. Well, have you ever lost your pet in the house? Uh, I, yes. A cat owner is what I think would do that. Yes, yeah. as a cat owner, I have definitely lost the cat in the house. Okay. Like it's in the couch again. Yeah. So the, the air tags will help you okay. if you frequently lose your animal in your house. Uh, but the problem with air tags is they use Bluetooth 5.0. Okay. And that gives you a range, best get open field, no obstruction. Like 30 feet or whatever? 800 feet. 800, okay. 800 feet. My house is not 800 feet long. Yeah, All so right. Well, in yeah. my case, it might work because my, my dog tends to Dude, get out and she feels is, bad. Said, it's like 300 feet is a football field. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess all right. Okay. In, in my mind, I've, you know, 800 Don's feet doesn't sound that impressive. I don't know what house <laughs> you live in, Don. <laughs> my dog would just run around back to the front door I mean, then and knock, basically. Don's like, you know, as I was drinking Cristal this morning <laughs> and pouring diamonds on all my food. It can't even get to the west wing of my house. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I cannot find the cat anywhere. What if the dog goes in the elevator? <laughs> yeah. Does it block the signal? Yeah. All yeah. right. So 800 feet to me didn't sound like a lot. But in terms of football fields, I guess that, that yeah. is yeah. a few yeah. of them. When, when the three. dog goes in your aviary well, <laughs> in the second solarium <laughs> all right so the air tags get you 800 feet on a clear day okay, that's the okay. range that you get so well, dogs if, don't escape on cloudy days <laughs> well that's true yeah they uh, t- tend to stay inside yeah, and behave well i'm do. all i'm all in for this I, i'm gonna get one of these and i'm gonna show you don but here's the thing I'm going to connect my dog to the uh, Amazon Sidewalk Network. <laughs> and it just runs around. As yeah. it's walking down the street, it's it's waving at every now, ring camera. That would be an example of where Amazon Sidewalk would work well, right? Because oh. it would extend the range of those air tags. That's yeah. true. So, you know, if the because Apple and Amazon are, are very <laughs> likely friends. to work together yeah, on friends. something. And if it's an animal you don't like, you'd be like, hold on, he's almost at the highway. <laughs> oh, God. Just hold off. Then you can, can, I, can I access your ring camera so I can watch this? Because I hate this dog. This dog just craps in my house Man. and pees on my carpets. Well, generally, I, I don't lose things very often, but when I do, it's usually something more than 800 feet away. So, yeah. like, if I, I'm like, man, did I leave my iPad at work? Oh right. Or or did I bring it home? Well, you know, if the if it's here at work, it gets on the Wi-Fi network, and so I can find it. Yeah. Well, I'm um, confused because people were talking about using these on their luggage. Yeah, well, I, I guess which, if you're in an airport, you could be within 800 feet of it. If you're, yeah, I guess you would right? know that. Oh, it's here, and it's almost. Oh, yeah. it's almost if it's to the baggage on another plane, plane. But you can't be like, oh, it's in Sri Lanka. Well, there it goes. <laughs> but that that 800 feet is line of sight, right? So yeah. a, a metal wall of a plane, yeah. Oh, yeah, a concrete wall of a building, out. glass, yeah. like all that shortens it up. Yeah. Like, you know, if you get one, Peter, uh, how much do they cost? I think they're like free. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Apple. 
totally give stuff yeah. away for free. Well, they probably will because this tracks you home. even further. <laughs> <laughs> it's more data they can have on you. But I don't know. I, I will get one, and I will report back. <laughs> I will get one. <laughs> and we will watch my dog. Yeah, well, we, we should do an experiment. Like, see how far away you can get with it, and it still picks up. Um, it yeah. looks like a four-pack is $100. So twenty five bucks piece, one for uh, each okay. of us and, and Courtney. There's a special right now where you can get <laughs> one for thirty bucks. Where is Courtney? <laughs> She's back there. Yeah. She doesn't even have to switch cameras on this show because it's no. just the three of us, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that that was a fun first look uh, at socially awkward. Maybe something that we will do again. I I, I hope more of our guests uh, cancel so we can do that again because <laughs> that was a good time. But uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we're going to come back and we're going to take a look at the news right here on Technado with Don Pizzette. How do IT leaders stay on top of their game with the IT Pro TV webinar series? Twice per month, IT Pro TV presents a webinar on current topics in the IT world. What are some of the key things we should be doing in our organization to make sure that we're prepared for disasters and then... Uh, so what do you say we go ahead and get started with today's topic, how to train your end users to threat. So we're going to talk about some of the major things that you need to do to help keep your people safe while they're working remote. You can catch IT Pro TV webinars live or watch on demand when your schedule permits. See them all. Visit itpro.tv slash webinars today. All right, welcome back to Technator with Don Pizzette. A lot of news to talk about this week, and uh, I say we, we go ahead and jump right in with our first segment, which is, what are we doing for this one? Is this, oh, new tech this week. We haven't done that one in a while, so... I, again, I should have looked for where these things are ahead of time, but uh, let's go ahead and play, play that intro. New tech this week. We got the scoop. I love stock audio. All right. <laughs> this audio. one is from WindowsCentral.com. Microsoft Build 2021, the top five biggest announcements. So apps, teams, and the future of Windows highlight this week's biggest announcements from Build 2021, which took place, what was that, last week here? Yep, just last week. So, uh, Don, what excites you? You know, honestly, uh, a, a lot of announcements did come out of Build 2021, but I kind of feel like uh, it was a bit of a letdown. I, the impression I got was they were all ready to release their multi-screen devices and Windows uh. 10X, and then they made the decision to cancel it all. And <laughs> so it was like, here's here's everything else we've been looking at. <laughs> and so it was just kind of a grab bag of miscellaneous <laughs> junk. Um some of it is is not really new and, and shiny for us. Uh, a couple of interesting things. Obviously, a huge investment in Microsoft Teams. So they've added some additional functionality there. The biggest thing that they've added to Microsoft Teams is the ability for people to write third-party apps that actually get involved with a live meeting. So <laughs> you've had apps in Teams already for sending like automated messages or bringing chats into channels, but now they're introducing the ability to do things like guided tours or voting booths or thumbs up, thumbs down type interactions with an actual video conference. So that's kind of mm. neat. We'll see some neat stuff come out of that. The uh, Windows Package Manager, Winget, is officially out of beta now. It's version 1.0. You can download it from the GitHub repository. They've got the releases there. Or soon, it will be available as a feature of Windows 10 for everybody. So it's, it's been available for the Insider Preview for a while, and now that one's coming out. And then the third thing is uh, Satya Nadella has teased a huge update coming for Windows 10. Uh, it is commonly believed this is going to be the October update for Windows 10 that's coming out. However, I would take that with a bit of a grain of salt because the huge update so far just looks like a slight UI refresh. So hmm. some changed icons and flat dark mode, a better dark mode, uh, basically <laughs> is what he said. even darker. Yeah. I wish I was joking, but it actually does have a slightly changed dark mode. Uh, wow. Yeah. So you know, a little little underwhelming, I think, as far as build how is you, concerned. How do you sneak and sell that? They, they go, guess what, everybody? You know that crappy dark mode we did before? Never mind about that. We got new and improved dark mode. It's even darker. It's just so 14 dark. 14% darker. darker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't even see it. It's so dark. Well, remember the uh, remember the old days when you were like running Windows 95 yeah. and Windows 98 came out, right? And it had features like uh, integrated Internet Explorer and stuff like that where you're like, oh, I want, I want to try that. I want yeah. that feature. Or Windows XP, right? There was some feature that would make you upgrade. Well, these upgrades are free. So you don't sure. have to pay for them, so they don't really have to give you anything. I like the idea <laughs> of a package manager. I mean, uh, they, they've had, what was it, Chocolatey? So Chocolatey is a third-party thing, though. It's not oh, Microsoft. Oh, gotcha. Yep. And there was NuGet 
for a little while as well. Oh, nice Again, money. not Microsoft, yeah. uh, but Winget is the one that's actually developed by the Microsoft PowerShell team. Okay. I think it's a PowerShell team. And I'm going to be able to do kind of like a, an app get kind of young yeah. experience. Yeah, and, and all the Microsoft apps are a part of it. So like if you want Visual Studio Code, you can do a Winget install VS Code. That's and it'll nice. just install it. So that, that is nice, and you can do updates with it. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm down with that. All right, so... Go really Microsoft. not much at the end of the day. I, yeah. You know, I counted thing. all the people here on this stock or this photo they took. There's like 17 or 18 people in that whole building. <laughs> like, at least <laughs> yeah. that you can see. Well, you know, with all the, the pandemic stuff, mm. all conferences and things have gone. It's just kind of sad. Yeah. yeah. Might be, yeah. I, you look I, at it that's going to be an old photo, I think, because all We're Microsoft stuff is virtual until You're virtual. Uh, 3 2021. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm, I'm in a different room. Have you noticed that? Uh, because we don't have our new desk yet. Yeah. yeah. We'll it's get, coming, it, though. get it soon. One day. All right. Well, our next article is from almalinux.org. Alma Linux OS 8.4 stable now available. That's nice. They put stable right in the title uh, so you can feel better <laughs> yeah. about it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I was running that unstable version. It yeah. sucked. <laughs> well, I will say in this case, it's actually kind of important. Uh, yeah. You know, last year we made, uh, we, we, we broke the news, news first here at uh, Technito, <laughs> about uh, Red Hat discontinuing their investment in CentOS and uh, putting their investment in CentOS Stream, which is not considered as stable as CentOS itself, which has led to many organizations abandoning CentOS as an operating system and people looking for an alternative. Well, one of the alternatives, actually several alternatives were announced, and at the time I cautioned everyone. I said, wait and see who shakes out here, because it, it's hard to maintain a distro. And when a new version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux comes out, it takes a while to get that ported over into these, these unofficial distributions. So wait and see who are going to be the major players and how long they're going to take. Well, Alma Linux had received a million-dollar investment from somebody, Cloud, something or another, I've forgotten who. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> from you know, Daniel himself invested a million dollars. That's a cute joke. And, uh, and I will tell you, they are certainly the front runners right now. If you're looking for a CentOS alternative, uh, Red Hat announced... Uh, rel 8.4 back on may 17th and then on may 28th i think 28th something this, like that this is 26 on this article so okay so shortly afterwards alma linux released their 8.4 version and that just means about 10 days passed between the Red Hat official release and the Alma release, that's even better than what CentOS had. There were some times where it took CentOS like six months to do some releases. So Alma Linux has definitely stepped up and said, look, we can do this. We can get these releases out in a timely manner and make them available to everybody. Is this the first time they've done this where they've like, okay, we're, we're trying to follow that trend and going to make this happen. We're going to be that stable kind of open source release of... Rel or whatever. This is the first time they formally done it. So they okay. released under 8.2 first. Okay. And then through like a informal process, did 8.3. Yeah. So this is the first time where they said, "Here, we're putting out the All big right. guns. Here's how we're going to do it." I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold back though on my, on my, uh, whether or not they can do this because yep. one time could be an anomaly. That's true. That's right? true. I want to see some consistency. Let's do it twice. Yeah. I wish they had a better name. All my Linux is kind of dumb. Well, it means. Soul. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Does it? Yeah. Soul. Soul. As in What's the, the point the in that? Inner being. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not as in Korea. <laughs> yeah, not as in Korea. <laughs> Don, this, this uh, article is from May 26th. Uh, have you had a chance to install this yet or, or give it a, a test run? I have not because I've been on vacation. But uh, uh, I thought that was your idea of vacation. Oh, well, you know, sometimes it is, I guess. But I, I did mess around with their 8.3 release, their early one, and it was pretty good. I was waiting to see you know, how long it would take them to do these updates. So, you know, definitely want to check. Nice. Well, I will look forward to hearing your review uh, once you get in there and play around a little bit. Is that something you ever try? Or, Daniel, you, you use more like the security-minded uh, Yeah, Linux. so I like Linux. Like, I like using Linux. I'm pretty comfortable in it, but I'm not like one of those people that are like, you know, every new little bell and, and whistle. Yeah. I, I need it very, um, what's the word? You want to try and uh, test I'm it. I'm utilitarian with yeah. it. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, well, let's skip over to our next article, which is from ArsTechnica.com. Vulnerability in VMware product has severity rating of 9.8 out of 10. That Rem sounds bad. That's, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Remote code execution flaw in vCenter server poses serious risk to data centers. Now, here's here's my question when I read this headline. Uh, you know, I, whenever the Olympics are on e each four years and you watch the gymnastics, you're like, oh, my gosh, this, this woman fell eight times and was terrible on the beam. <clears throat> she got a 9.6. 
<laughs> and it's like, oh, this woman was amazing. Nice. She got a nine point yeah. eight. You know, it's yeah. so, so is this like that, or do people? You know, there are actually people get severity ratings of like three and stuff. No, nah, there's really only three ratings, like four, six, and nine point eight. Yeah. Right, that's <laughs> how it works. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, anytime there's remote code execution, that's bad. <laughs> so if somebody can remotely access the device and then execute code without authenticating, that's bad. They can do whatever they want. And that's exactly what's going on here. What makes this one so severe is the problem isn't in like VMware ESX. The problem is in vCenter. The uh, vCenter server is the control server that controls your ESX farm or ESXi farm. And that means if somebody's able to compromise the vCenter server, they can then propagate commands out to your entire data center. So the severity is really high. Now, in order to exploit this, the attacker has to have access to the vCenter server. And that means they either need to be on your network or they need to have, or you need to have exposed your vCenter server on the internet. And we've talked about this in other episodes of the podcast. It is a terrible idea to expose your management network to the internet. So you shouldn't be doing that in the first place. So that means this either needs to be an inside job or the attacker needs to already have a foothold on your network. But any management server like vCenter should be on a segregated network to protect it. So there, there are steps you're probably already taking that make this a 4 and not a 9.8, right? But if your vCenter server is exposed to the internet, yeah, this is a 9.8, but you're already making enough bad mistakes that this isn't the only 9.8 on your network. Yeah, that would that's not good, though. But those remote code executions... Uh... And like you say, you kind of go back to that uh, 9.8 and you think, sometimes I'll see stuff like that. And I, I really like to check the complexity, like how complex is this to pull off? So even if I had the stars align, what would the possibility of an attacker being able to actually execute these things? Mm -hmm. Would that be a difficult thing? I haven't I haven't looked at the CV. I was trying to look it up before we got into this. So bit. I don't normally do this, Daniel, because yeah. I assume you do, but this time I actually did dig oh, into did that. Oh, did yeah. yeah. So uh, in vCenter, there is the ability to do a virtual SAN, a storage area oh, network. Yeah. So you can do yeah. a vSAN that masks your physical SAN devices on the back end. And there is a page on there that does a vSAN health check. Yeah. And it has an input field that doesn't validate Sanitate. or sanitize yes, yeah. your input. Yeah. Nice. So you can throw whatever you want in there. And then on the <laughs> back end, because it's part of the vSAN framework, it's running at full administrative credentials with full cool. access to everything. So who that bad. So yeah. So, so there, what's there's cool your about that though is like, I say cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I mean to say is, is if I were an attacker and I found that page and I was able to exploit that page, you know, you think about, okay, I've compromised a server. But I've probably actually compromised a lot of servers mm -hmm. because this is the virtualization platform that manages all these servers. And from what I understand, that is the you're you're below the operating system. You're you're closer to the metal oh, yeah. than the operating system is. So I could even poison up into the operating system to trust everything that I'm telling it. And now I have basic like insight into all of the operating systems that are running on top of that platform. So it's probably not just one. It could be 10, 20, 100 different servers. Absolutely. And once you find a vulnerability like this, you're a Shodan search away yeah, you are. from finding other victims. Right. And let's say, I wonder what the average like uh, workload for an ESXi farm is. Like, On average, how many servers do you find running on one actual metal server? And let's say it's 50, right? And if there's, I think it said there was 5,000 something, um, 5,600 public facing vCenter machines. So multiply that by 50, and now you've got your your actual fallout. Yeah, yeah, so, big deal. Yep, and uh, and this has been patched. So if you run vCenter and it's exposed to the internet, I yeah. mean, honestly, if it's internal anyway, yeah. because you could have an insider attack. You do want to update. You will be protected once that happens. But it just shows how dangerous these management interfaces can be. Hmm. I thought we'd agreed to refer to this product as e sexy. <laughs> e sexy. No, that that's if Elon Musk worked there. Um, yeah. yeah. I was really hoping that would take off. <laughs> keep keep going for it, man. You'll yeah, get it. I'll, it'll happen. You fight the good fight. Be the change you want to see in the world, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. You got to look at the mirror and make a change. That's right. Oh, are we quoting Michael Jackson now? Shemong. <laughs> okay. I thought, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> Michael Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> I get those two mixed up I all know, the time. Just... All right. Uh, our next segment is, ooh, a fun one. Who got pwned? Looks like you're about to get pwned. Fatality. Yeah! And this is the most appropriate use of that intro yet. This is from the record.media. The FBI will feed hacked passwords directly into Have I Been Pwned? And we're, of course, talking about that website, Have I Been Pwned, uh, which is what we go to to find out if we have, in fact, 
been pwned. So what does this mean that the FBI will be feeding them hacked passwords? They're basically letting them know the ones that, that they've found in the past? So this is actually a pretty big deal. Uh, one criticism I've applied to have I been pwned in the past is the limited amount of password databases they have. So basically when a password database is compromised and a hacker releases it publicly on the dark web, Either volunteers find it and send it to the Have I Been Pwned team, which is really just one person, uh, or or he actually goes out. I think his name is, is it Troy Hunt. Is that his yeah, name? I yep. think so. Yeah. Uh, so Troy will go out and try and find these things himself, uh, but he's just one person, right? And for every database that's being publicly released for free on the dark web, there's probably a hundred that are not public, that are either being sold or being used for other purposes that we never find out about, right? Well, there are plenty of databases where the FBI knows about them, where a company is hacked, compromised, whatever. They call the authorities. The FBI gets involved. And so the FBI takes the hashed password database that they now know about. That's not being publicly given away on the dark web. And they are automatically linked up and handing that over to Have I Been Pwned. So now Have I Been Pwned will have one of the most complete compromised databases, at least for companies that have contacted the authorities. Now, there's still going to be companies that have been hacked that are trying to hide it, that have not contacted the authorities, and maybe they paid a ransom or whatever, and maybe they don't even know that their database has been stolen. So there's going to be gaps like that. It's certainly not perfect, but it really does put them, you know, the Have I Been Pwned website is now a lot more valuable and useful than it used to be. Yeah, it, it's it, the con the conversation about passwords has always been an interesting one to me because you know, I was talking about this with David Bombel and we kind of we we shot a little thing about using John the Ripper to crack passwords and that conversation he he was telling me, you know, people get on to me when I do stuff like this because they're saying, "Oh, that password you used is way too easy." I said, "What's easy? Easy is if it was landed in a dictionary list somewhere, it's going to be easy for the machine to do it because it just runs to the list, right? So it doesn't matter its complexity or whatever. And so, like you say, them taking these these um, released passwords and feeding it straight into the system and making that system more robust for us to be able to check and see if our passwords are a part of a breach somewhere or are just bad in general because they are in a list allows us to do better OPSEC because now we can say, I can let me I think I'm gonna use this password. Let me check and see its veracity. I can go to have I been pwned, see if it shows up anywhere. And now that means a little something more than it did before because I'm getting good live up to date yep. intel that's coming from a reliable source. Sure. Now, can, can oh. you search that way as well on there? Because I, whenever I've gone there, I put my email address in and I see if my email has been part of a compromise. But you're saying you can actually mm -hmm. type in a password and see what how secure it is or if that password has been used before in other places that have been Yes, and, and it's partly because of this new stuff. So uh, in order to do the, the email lookup, the FBI would basically have to give your email to have I been pwned, which is a privacy concern. So they aren't doing yeah. that. So they're just giving hashed passwords over. And so that means you can't search based on your email address. That's not going to turn these up. But you can you can type in your password or send a hash of your password up, and it'll show whether or not that password has been used on a compromised site, which might not be you. You know, it might be somebody else just happened to pick the same password as you, and, you know, that may not, you know, maybe a false positive. You, what, one, two, three, four, five, six has been used by somebody else? I yes. can't believe wow. it. Jeez, come on. This it's person named so their hard. dog the same thing? <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> well, it's probably like relatives that use the same, you know, I was, name. I was or... explaining to um, some of the people out here the birthday paradox oh, yeah. and how that works. It's like, man, you, it, it ramps up to 100% that you will have somebody if you give it enough people, which isn't as large as a group as you might think it'd be. What is the birthday paradox? Where if you're in a room with like X amount of people, I want to say it's in the 70s or something like that. If you have like... Someone else will have the same birthday. Someone will, 100% oh. of the time, per different groups, you'll have the same birthday as somebody else. It it it, it, it reaches 100% accuracy like very quickly. Wow. So, which is why they call it a paradox, because it seems counterintuitive that you would be in a random group of people. And yeah, but everybody has the sex birthday. the same time of year, right? Or is that, <laughs> Fact. That just me? I mean, those right. cold days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snuggling. <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not dirty, Peter. It's humans. All right. I disagree. Our next segment <laughs> is Behind Bars. Break That's the law question. and you'll go to jail. Again. I think it'll take off, yeah. <laughs> All right, our, uh, this article comes to us from BBC.com. Sandwell Bitcoin mine found 
stealing electricity. You're telling me that Bitcoin miners are stealing electricity? No way. That no. just doesn't check out. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we've covered this in the past. Like, Bitcoin consumes more electricity due to mining than, like, the Netherlands. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's, that was the impetus behind, what, Elon Musk's thing recently about not accepting Bitcoin anymore, right? Because yeah. of the, the impact. It, I mean, it doesn't sound like, on its face, you're like, oh, it's we're talking about a digital thing, but the amount of, of processing power it takes and, and the electricity involved is yeah. a, lot of, a lot of energy. And I'm, I'm fairly negative on Bitcoin, but this article I thought was pretty funny because basically the police got a tip that there was a, a an unusual building, a building that lots of people were going in and out at odd hours all during the day. And so the, the police investigated it, and they flew a drone over that did a thermal sensor and saw a large amount of heat coming out of the building. And it checked every box on their marijuana grow house checklist, oh, right? Because they need the lights and, and all those things oh, that, yeah. that pull, pull a lot of power. All the, you know, the heat, the power draw, the people in and out at different hours of the day. Like, they thought it was a grow house. Are there massive marijuana fields in England? Uh, apparently so. <laughs> and, uh, and so when they went in, they were surprised to find not a marijuana want to grow house but instead a illegal bitcoin mining farm now mining bitcoin is not illegal in the uk however they had illegally tapped into the power grid and had stolen thousands of pounds worth of electricity uh not pounds as a weight yeah. pounds as a money you weigh electricity? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have buckets of electricity oh, laying around just flow it out everywhere <laughs> so uh so you know it was interesting because it, it really did fit the mold of a grow house but in this case it was bitcoin mining and probably more profitable than a grow house <laughs> you know i have to wonder about that because well, it's getting harder and harder to mine bitcoin it right? is yeah. yeah so the return on your investment is much less but if you're stealing the power see that's why they should have done no, it the, the old-fashioned way uh, where you use a botnet right that's right then you, you're not Stealing, well, you're still stealing the power well, just from a lot of individual people. Like a group that had hacked into uh, wind generators oh. and were using the computers that run the wind generators to Bitcoin mine, <laughs> right? And the company found out about it and they were like, I mean, it hasn't interrupted with any of our day to day operations, so who cares? Leave it. And they were like, cool. But but point it to our <laughs> wallet now. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Do yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, in this case, and I, I don't know about the economics of selling weed, so there, there's uh. that's going to factor into this. But I have to imagine some potting soil in a bucket is cheaper <laughs> than like an RTX 3080. Yeah, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. But if you're stealing thousands of pounds and – I mean, but those things are still pretty darn expensive, right? Like yeah. you'd have to steal a lot yeah. of electricity – to still get an ROI on that. So it's Iran was just having a problem with this. You know, Iran uh, has publicly subsidized electricity yeah. uh, for, for a number of different reasons. <laughs> and what they found was like a lot of people were mining Bitcoin. Uh, and I think it was, they said it was something like 13% of the world's Bitcoin mining happens in Iran. Wow. Uh, and they were having power blackouts. And it was wow. because of the excessive draw from all these mines. And so the government finally had to step in and say, that's it. It is illegal to mine Bitcoin Whoa. Uh, unless you're licensed by the country or something yeah, like, like that. Now, when I go to a hotel, you know, I turn the AC down to 50 because it's <laughs> yeah, not my power. So it's yeah. same, and I just same turn the water thinking. on, let it run all the yeah. whole time. <laughs> <Who cares? laughs> flush it again. I'm getting my money's worth. That's right. I actually built like a Rube Goldberg machine, just flush the <laughs> toilet over and over again. <laughs> now, in, uh, my question would be like, why did they make Bitcoin mining illegal and not, like, just put caps on people's electricity use? Like, what if I built a, a wind generator or a solar farm or something like that? Yeah. Am I still against the law because I'm mining Bitcoin? So I, I'm not the world's okay. foremost authority on Iran, but I would have to assume it's the path of least resistance. Like, right. it's got to be pretty hard to do sophisticated monitoring of electric, electricity use yeah. and, and all that. Like, we, we have smart meters and things here. Gotcha. I don't think they have that in Iran. Uh, so it's easier to just say you can't do this. Yeah. That's uh, like for true. years they told you you couldn't steal cable, and they, and they knew. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't yeah. know. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it sounds like, like you said, though, Don, you can still get licensed, so maybe it's just regulated now in the sense that they can say, hey, we're capping this at 10,000 people to get licenses mm -hmm. or whatever, and so they can yeah. at least say, hey, when this person stops, then a license becomes available. Yeah. Or, something or I mean, like it, that. it makes sense that if you are subsidizing electricity for normal people to live, yeah. like to not let Bitcoin miners use it. So yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I, I get that. I get that. Just like, uh, Don's I'm always trying to think of ways to get around the rules. I don't know why yeah. I do that. I, you know, Bitcoin mining is so hard right now. Uh, and it consumes so much electricity. And that, that's one of the drivers behind, um, oh, what's the, the storage one? Um, oh. No, it's no, Chia Coin. 
Oh, well, I haven't uh, heard of that one. Chia Quinn? Oh, so yeah. Chia Quinn works on a whole different principle <laughs> that uh, <laughs> instead of you trying to calculate a hash or whatever, you know, yeah. and, and hit a match and mine a Bitcoin, uh, which is, is super CPU intensive, Chia Coin works based on persistence of storage. And so you create a POS. Uh, they, they call it like a farmed drive, basically. So yeah. you, you have to plow your drive. It's all this farming That's terminology. Yeah. Um, and so say you have a four terabyte drive and you make it available. It right, you starts plow to store your data. There we go. So uh, it starts to store data on transactions, and other people are storing copies as well. And the longer you have it, the more trusted your data is. Okay. And so it's really just like the longevity of the data that authenticates. So it doesn't consume nearly as much electricity. It doesn't consume hardly any CPU. So like a Raspberry Pi can be a yeah. Chia farm. Oh, huh. so so there's That's alternatives, cool. and I think that kind of signals it's more stable. Yeah, yeah, and I. I don't find a lot of value in Bitcoin. I really don't think it should exist in the way that it does. But you're I could, a Doge man. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I could see something like Chia Coin replacing it though, because it's just a huge negative energy impact. Yeah, you heard it here right, first. I, I Buy that. Chia Coin. That's right. I actually saw uh, <laughs> somebody walking so. in my neighborhood the other day and had a Shiba Inu or you know, whatever they are. Shiba that Inu. dog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, Doge Coin. <laughs> And, and then like, you kicked it. You weird person. <laughs> <laughs> and it ran away, but he was able to track yeah, it. They called the cops. They were nice. The Apple Air Tag. <laughs> it had air tags all around yeah. its collar. Yeah, all man. over it. <laughs> it looked like uh Okay, I'll stop there. <laughs> it, it had the air tags as the uh, gauges in its ears. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was gonna say Dolph Lundgren <laughs> in uh Universal Soldier. <laughs> all right. Look. Yeah, I'll just, leave it there. I just put the air tags in my dog's food. <laughs> Then I know where she's gone, and I can go and, and get a bag and yeah. do the whole thing. Yeah. That way you don't have to walk her. You just let her go. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and every week, once a week, I go yeah. around and I pick up all the poop. All right. Uh, speaking What's of... What's next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the promos. Yeah, so that's that's the worst part about this. I uh, want to let you know we've got a free weekend coming up at IT Pro TV. It is uh, June 12th and 13th. It is our hacking weekend because we are in hacking month now over at IT Pro TV. Um, so I think what five courses are going up uh, that week: CompTIA Pentest Plus, uh, Hands On Hacking, uh, CEH V10, OWASP Top 10, uh, and pen testing and Linux shell scripting basics. So uh, those are the courses that will be free. That's six courses, isn't it? I'm gonna watch those. <laughs> Aren't you in some of those? <laughs> well, all of them. I don't think so. <laughs> he can't watch himself. It's tough. But head over to itpro.tv and you can sign up for that free weekend. Check it out and see if IT Pro TV is something that works for you and see what the courses are like and, and see more of Daniel's ugly mug. So, uh, And then you can also sign up for a webinar that's actually taking place uh, today, the day this comes out, Breaking the Code of Digital Transformation, What Most Organizations Miss When Creating Digital Strategies. Uh, that is at uh, yeah Thursday, June 3rd, like I said, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time with Mark Bradley and Leslie Landry, uh, as well as IT Pro TV's Chris Ward. Uh, so we're talking all about uh, ITIL stuff and, you know, that kind of stuff that I don't understand yet, but I can <laughs> after this webinar. And uh, you can sign up at itpro.tv slash webinars. Uh, and even if you've missed that uh, live, you can go there and you can check out the recorded version, which will be up the next day, and uh, see all about that and all the past webinars that are also archived there as well. So definitely check those out. And uh, finally, while you're on that Internet, head over to techna.do because we, uh, I think we fixed that uh, security certificate, right? Dayon was hacking it, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It worked when I checked. Okay, <laughs> and it's fixed. See, it's fixed. And I just checked, and, and yeah, technate.do. You can also go to technate.com. Um, but you can, yeah, submit some uh, some viewer mail there. Let us know uh, what you want us to cover. And you can also hit the big orange button up in the top, sponsored by Pro TV. And you can click on that, get a 30% off coupon code for the lifetime of your personal plan, and request a team trial uh, for your business and find out about the great features available to teams from IT Pro TV. That's all at Tech. Do. Uh, all right, guys. Well, I think we, we had a fun episode. We, even with no guests, we were able to, to make do. And we did. We were our own guest. That's right. And that was special. It does You're, make it easier to laugh at your own jokes. It you know? does. Yeah. Well, and, and there's no filter. Like, I don't have to be worried about, like, am I going to offend this person? <laughs> Which, I always love it when you guys come to me like, yeah, we had to edit that out in the recording. <laughs> That's we, so rare. And we really didn't do that today. We should have. Uh, we didn't get racy enough, I guess. Yeah. All right, would someone like to uh, just let out a string of expletives? <laughs> <laughs> turn turn off the uh, the radio yeah, in the car, that's right. kids. <laughs> turn off the radio. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, maybe next week. Yeah, yeah we'll see you then. Always open. Yeah, we'll see you next week right here on Technado with Don Pizzette.